This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. Today I want to do a quick update on some dark slash red things. I don't know why, I walked around the shop and saw a load of red things, right? And I thought, oh, I'll do the video on that today. Literally, today is like a whole week past Valentine's, right? And I'm guessing that's why the thought was in my head to do red things. Should I have done this maybe a week ago? Yes, absolutely. Are we doing it now? Yes, we are. So without further ado, just want to show you some plants. Nice and simple. The first plants I want to show you today are these right and you know what I know we're all so past these plants but I think they're incredible and they don't get enough love but they really are amazing this is philodendron splendid aka a cross between philodendron melanochrysum and philodendron varicosum both great mother plants they've got their pros and cons don't get me wrong but these these are so, so strong. So the reason I have these, I'm not like, oh my God, let's propagate them, let's sell them. The reason I have these is because I was clearing up a while ago and there was kind of like a great big vine just crawling along the floor with these leaves on. And I thought the leaves were so immaculate and perfect. I really don't want to throw them away. So I just made loads of cuts across the vine, obviously, put them all together and just sort of slapped them in beakers, actually, old TC beakers to let them grow. And to be fair, I think, oh my God, I can't believe I've just done that. That's so embarrassing. To be fair, to be fair, the water needs replacing. They have actually started to grow. Now, some of the aerials that were outside the liquid haven't done so great because they've actually not been in the unit. They've been in front of house, but they are growing. Look, I've got a few. I've got three in that one. I've actually got a few more in that one. I'm going to actually fill this up super quick because I know I'll forget. Give me one moment. I have filled the beakers and I'm going to try not to tip them again. So yeah, that's what these guys are. They're in the dark red category because obviously, I hope on camera they're coming off nice and dark because they're still, honestly, they're still such good plants. But if you didn't know, they do inherit the red-ish backs from the varicosum. You can see actually this one here. Hang on. Let me just put one of these down because it's not necessary. This here, you should probably be able to see the reddish colored back. It's not super red. It's more of like a rhubarb blush, but it is there. But I just want to take a second to rep these plants once again. These are usually on a easy philodendron sort of video, could you say? If I did another easy philodendron that were not crawlers and they were climbers, heads up, these would be on it because I think they're fantastic and I think you really can't go wrong. I have more than one. I have one from my old house that's in the corner. Admittedly, it needs starting again. It's got a bit leggy or whatever. And to be fair, the bottom leaves are gorgeous. And I have this here and I have sort of bits and pieces all over the shop, but these are probably arguably the nicest looking. Not the largest, don't get me wrong, not the largest, but they're very, very cute. And I probably will plant them up and grow them once I'm done with them, because why not? Why not? I could put them all around a pool like that and have some really pretty growth out of them and have like a bush rather than just sort of growing one. Because if there's anything... How do I put this? If there's anything really good about the plant climate that we're in now, stuff like this, if you want to put it up a pole, you don't just have to have one vine going up a pole anymore, right? You can add two or three and make it really bushy so that the entire of your pole looks like this. I think that's quite a good thing and people don't really talk about that. So that is a pro point sometimes of plants being a bit cheaper. The plants you do have at home, you could probably disguise those moss poles a little bit and make them look a bit, just a bit fuller, a bit thicker, you know what I mean? Thick with two C's. Anyway, I'm going to pop these down and hopefully I won't tip them again. So I will just put them on this table. Right, what have I got for you all? Right, next one I want to update you on is this guy. I got this from Cartel Dawn a long time ago. This guy right here. I know what you're thinking. This is Anthurium mudinum. And I'm not going to waste any time because I know you guys are going to ask me. I know you guys are going to ask me. You're going to say, hey, is this your mysterious dark boy? And the answer is, I don't know. So this guy, I mean, I can see sort of similarities, but I don't think it's the same from looking at it. I'm not really sure. I feel like... I don't know. There's similarities, but there's also similarities with Red Beauty. You have to understand this, okay? So I'm not exactly sure which one it is. Time will tell. There was also another one. Apologies, can't remember what it was, that a few people tagged me in on Facebook recently that was doing the rounds and it was sort of dark and cool and the flower was quite purpley. Well, this one's kind of like that as well. I don't know. I do need to do more work into finding out what he is, but I'm not really that bothered because he is what he is and he's fine there. Do you know what I mean? But aside from that, this is, to 
to my knowledge, Anthurium mudinum. I just wanted to show you him because he's doing okay. He's actually multiplying himself quite nicely. I try and rotate this around. Can you see how quickly he's multiplying? So obviously, as a shop, the good thing to do would be to try and separate it and grow it out. But I just want to show you this so you can actually see the journey of how the leaves sort of age. What I will say is, what I will say is, mine seems to stay darker a lot longer than this does. Don't know why. Like, this leaf down here, don't know if you can see it. Yeah, probably. It's dark, but it, it's green now. This one, still very, very dark. And all these other ones up top here, still very, very dark. It's only the very, very lower leaves that are behaving green, right? Now, yes, it could be a light thing, could be whatever, but it is something I'm sort of noticing. They do lighten up very, very quickly. These old leaves here are quite light, in my opinion. In my opinion compared to these two don't know answers on a postcard but i thought i'd show you him because he's very cute i do have some of my mysterious dark boy and he does look different and i promise you i would pull him out and i will do it in a later video he's just tangled up so i can't they need propagated and they need gone through because i do want to start selling some more at some point in spring so we've got a little bit of time but i need to propagate those and i guess when i do i will pull mine out and i will pull this out and i will show you why i think it's possibly not mudinum i don't know i'm gonna pop him down just wanted to show you him right another anthurium this one's quite pretty actually now it could be in slightly better condition slightly slightly better condition and it's because the trough that it's been sat in it's got a bit of a buildup of algae in it so the roots you could they're quite green you can see that but other than that he's doing very nice and i really like this plant i think it's quite unique what is it this is anthurium king of spades now i actually recommend this a lot so I'll show you the older leaves first. That again, they're not brilliant. Um, they look like this and they're all wet because they were in a pot and I just watered over very quickly with a hose. So a few of the plants you'll see today are a bit wet. Some of them aren't. This is one of the ones that are. So this is an older leaf here and look how round it is. It's almost like a forgetty eye that someone's kind of sat on and just sort of squished it. That's one leaf there. That's another leaf there. And the new leaf, look at this. Look at this. If you are into your, I'm kicking the camera. If you're into your anthurium and you haven't seen this yet, you might really like this. I think this is reasonably sought after, I would say. Um, but look at him. He has a little red petiole insertion. He has lovely red blush back there and the petiole, does it keep it? It doesn't fully keep the red as you can see on the other ones. But either way, it's extremely unique to look at. And I honestly think in the world of anthuriums and when you get hybrids and things like that, it just gets a bit hard. Uh, yeah, there's loads of hybrids out there, but sometimes one thing looks like another thing and it's just, you know what I mean? It just gets a bit samey. Now that's my opinion. Because I, I like anthuriums, but I'm not absolutely obsessed with them. Okay, it's probably not my favourite. And I think I said this on a video a while ago and a lot of people wildly disagreed with me when I was like, oh, I think in the aroid world it would be like philodendron monstera anthurium and everyone's like no anthurium's are number one so that's just where we disagree but yeah this guy is super cool his, his veins are quite muted which i actually quite like i've said this a million times about plants you know me i don't mind a bit of contrast but a lot of the time it's as far as anthuriums go i like something muted philodendron i can play around a little bit more but uh there's the uh, <laughs> there's the roots they're healthy roots don't get me wrong guys but as you can see they're a little bit green so that tray needs rinsed out and probably a little bit of feed or whatever else and just get him get him going but he's very cute and he's grown from i think he's grown from a much smaller plant so i'm quite happy with him he's very very nice and if you haven't seen this before maybe it's something you might like there you go one last one of him there you go Love Lovely. Pause for one second. I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Both of my brands actually use Squarespace websites, both my Nurture System brand for my fertilizer and other such things, and also the Rare Plant Shop uses Squarespace as well. I don't need any coding knowledge or anything like that to navigate the changes on the website or to make changes across loads of different pages at once. It's all super intuitive. It's so easy to do, and I can make it completely my own. If you'd like to set up a website, either for yourself or to sell something online maybe, head to squarespace.com for your free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me guys. Back to the video. Right. What can I do now? Oh, in the spirit of Anthurium, one more thing. And for some reason, I've watered over this bag. That's very annoying. This is just being cut today and it's being put in a bag so that these can just sort of, they can be safe, right, if they fall. But I have here for you this. And it does fit in with the theme of red and dark, okay? It does. I realise this is quite a bright red, but it is still a red. There you go. I do think 
I think, I think these are, because Ben Ben cut this and then he's just left. I think this is Palladiflorum narrow form seeds. And look how cool they are. They've been going for a little while. We've been waiting on those ages and it's been on the end of an aisle and I've been walking past it just trying my hardest not to basically break it on the way past because I'm terrible for things like that. I'm really quite rough with plants and I, I probably shouldn't be sometimes. So that little seed that was hanging on for dear life has just fell off. But that is why they're in this little baggie here, basically, to keep them nice and safe. But they look really cool, don't they? I think that's quite bonny. I quite like that. So at some point, these seeds are going to be put into probably moss and we'll grow them on from there because that's what we tend to do with seeds in here. Um, I do have... Where are they? I don't know what they are, do I? Do I? Um, this is the, I can't remember the word, Lecunera, whatever the, whatever the hell that plant's name is, crossed by Delta Force, these ones. These are seeds and they've been started in moss and they're still in moss right now. But we do just sort of drop a few seeds in and just not touch them, come what may. So they're looking quite cute. And I actually, you know what, I can't see a ton of Delta Force in there, but I can definitely see the other parent in there. I'll just show you that. This is not part of the uh, video, by the way, but I thought I'd show you. So that's what I tend to do with seeds if anybody's wondering. I don't lecker them because I often find that if you put them in lecker, the gaps between the lecker are too much and they essentially just fall through. Um, similarly, pawn as well. I think they just get lost in the pawn. I just find moss a little bit better than that. So that's what I use for that. Right, two plants I'm going to show you next. It is the same plant. I'm just holding up two of them because they haven't done amazing in winter. However, still love these plants. I will always give them a plug whenever I can because I think they're brilliant. And I think anybody that likes dark, um, you know, dark red hairy things should really have one of these. So one moment. Oh, I've watered some of these plants and honestly, I shouldn't have done it for the video. It's not going to help me. I'm going to get covered. These guys. Yes. Yes. Look at this. If you weren't convinced to get one, now you should be. As I say, you can probably tell by that leaf there, not done the best over winter. This one's done a bit better, a bit cuter. These here are, to my knowledge, Philodendron Squammy Coal Blood. It's just what I was sold them as, guys, honestly. I won't bore you with the story. I've told everyone a million times, but I don't have many of these. And being totally honest, I've been pretty lazy with propagation. I have... <sighs> like five of them and I should have propagated them but honestly gonna to be totally honest I might have said this before I don't know they're not very easy to propagate they're not very easy to propagate which is probably why their value is still decent and when you see one online it's one leaf so there's not that many of them about and when they are you kind of propagate them very easily does it make it any less of a pretty plant no absolutely not this is absolutely adorable let me just do this one at a time I don't know why I outnumber myself with plants I'll just show you up close how good this is no camera trickery it really is pretty much black it's the blackest green you could get and on the other side you get literally you get that look at them and i don't think it really wears off no, it kind of stays like that. So that is a little bit like, if you like Mysterious Dark Boy, right? Or Mudinum or whatever it is, but you're like, mm, no to Anthurium, I want a Philodendron. I suggest something like this, actually. This or, this was not part of the update either, but let me just grab it. Because it's applicable to what I am saying. <sighs> He should have been in the update, really. I don't know why he's not. But you could go for something like this as well. This is the gorgeous Philodendron Majesty. Yes, it is black. This is blacker than the Squammy Call. Can you see? If I just focus on this leaf that I'm sort of rattling in front of you here. Don't get wrong, there's really not a lot in it at all. But this one will, it will cast a really, really dark green. This casts almost black. Like, I'm wearing black, by the way, for your comparison. And that's the color the plants are throwing off. They're pretty black. You know what I mean? Both really great plants. But yeah, these ones, I need to, I need to find out what the secret is to propagating them. If you have one of these and you propagate it well, let me know. Because for me, let me just put this big boy down. Because he was a bit, he wasn't, he wasn't the expected thing to be looking at. So this boy here, my issue is with them just being totally transparent. Because I know not everyone has these aerial roots, guys. <sighs> Listen, it's humid enough in here. It's humid enough in here. Even in winter, I'm not saying it's brilliant, but it's humid enough. No, no aerials at all. I can't get them. I've got those little, you know, when you get on climbing philodendrons, you get those really tiny, they almost look like the ends of pins and they're really, really woody and they just don't produce anything. I'm basically getting those not great. As for the little one, where did I put him? I love the fact that I've knocked the majesty over. 
Well, actually, he knocked himself over with the sheer amount of weight. Like this one here. I don't know how he was propagated. He could well have been a head cutting, I think. Something like that. He just, like, no, nothing has a root. It's just... It is what it is, which is really annoying because if I was going to sell one, this is quite a nice size for me to sell the plant. Like if I was going to list one for sale, I think that's cute. I could obviously sell them bigger, but at the rate I've got and how many I've got and how quickly I can propagate them, this is more realistic. You know what I mean? But given that I don't have enough of them, I kind of can't sell them yet. So ugh, I don't know what to do. I might keep some of them like this, grow them a little bit bigger and make some mothers out of them and maybe try and take literally one head cutting and try and root it. Because what I don't want to do, and I do get like this with plants sometimes if I don't have many. I won't do a big propagation pass, right? And this is pro tip. If you think that you do not have a handle on propagating a plant or you don't know how it's going to go, don't propagate it all. Don't propagate it all. If you've got a big philodendron that's growing on a pole, just do a head cutting. Nothing else. Literally nothing else. If you have more than one, just do the one. Maybe two maximum and try a couple of different mediums or something like that. Do not go and propagate the whole thing unless you know what you're doing. I know sometimes things can just happen, but it's a really good way of minimizing that. So that's what I'll probably do with these. I'll put him back, but look. Oh, God, he's cute, isn't he? He's so cute. So cute. Right, what else have we got? Oh, I'll quickly hold this guy up. Now, he's going to look a bit crap, but it's how he's been sat. He's been sat on a shelf looking a bit weird. So he's, his, his arms, his arms, his arms, his petioles are pointing downwards. But this guy here, you can see he's got three big leaves. This is my wonderful red crystallinum. And I didn't feel like I could do the video without mentioning him. I keep kicking this camera, guys. I'm so sorry. You're now going to shake for a little bit. But this guy won't spend too long on him because there's not a lot to see. This guy is really cute. Again, repping the red crystal. Same care as a regular crystal, but just a little bit nicer to look at, to be honest. Can't go wrong with either, but if you want something that has the edge, that's like an upgrade, this is your boy. He also has a flower coming in for the millionth time, which I will try and not wobble him too much. Here, I zoom in on him the best I can. I don't think it's focusing properly, but there you go. That's kind of him. There is not a lot to say about him. Look how weird he looks. He needs to just be sat with a light source above him and hopefully he should pick his petioles back up because he does look a bit weird. He looks a bit weird. He sat on the top of a shelf. I think he might have sat up there at one point and all the plants up there are trying to like point downwards. Not ideal. But we'll pop him down. He was just sort of a... I mean, he was borderline an honourable mention, which is stupid because he's red crystalline, and but hey-ho. Right, listen, this guy, I know I've spoke about him semi-recently, but I need to speak about him again because he is absolutely triumphant. And even his roots are really, really red. Look at this. How awesome is that? Now, there's a lot going on here. I think most of this is what you call it. It's algae and stuff like that. It's not rot. There's a tiny bit of rot there. But all this black brown stuff, it's not. It's algae and stuff. It's the same as the other plant. But do you remember ages ago, I showed you this plant. And I said, oh, there's something growing in here. Well, the colocasia that literally hijacked a ride onto it is growing in it. But you know what? That's dark too, so it counts. So what is it? This is philodendron biliti crossed with philodendron hercules. And honestly, if you want something that will outlive yourself, this is the plant. This is incredible. Honestly, I've never quite known a plant as tough as this. Hercules, never dealt with it myself, must be so damn tough so tough. I'm not saying Biliti isn't, because it is, but Hercules must just be something else. Literally must be something else. Now, I don't like the way Hercules looks on its own. I actually prefer this hybrid, and I honestly think this hybrid's tough enough. Why would you want to complicate it? So if you don't want a Biliti, or you've got one, you prefer something that's a bit more, what's the word, compact? If you look at this, you can see that the way it grows and the internodal spacing, it's very stout, right? It's very short. Ignore the colocasia. <laughs> in the middle randomly. He's very, very stout. So if you're looking for something a little bit more compact than a Biliti and you don't want anything quite as out there, this is a beautiful alternative. This is a new leaf coming in this beautiful pink color. I hope it comes off. It is more of like a, a pinky peach than an orange, definitely, but it's still a very gorgeous plant. And if I just show you the sheer meatiness, and I would use that word, meatiness of this plant, you need only look at this latest leaf, right? The size of the fat petiole on that. I hope it comes off on camera and look at the girth. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> Shut up. The girth, right, is really quite nice. It's just so tough and so stout. I love it. I really love this plant. And I actually think it could grow quite magnificently. Needless to say, 
it roots well. It roots well. Therefore, on that basis, guys, I'm going to assume it propagates well. Now, I've said this before. I don't know if I have more than one of these or I had more than one of these, but I can only find one. And it's this guy. And I don't really want to do anything with him. If you're interested in buying some of these, maybe I can have a look for them. I might have said that before. But let me know because I don't think I want to do anything to him. I like him so much the way he is. He's so nice and mature. And he just looks great. Like, why would I want to change this? That's gorgeous. Look at that. That's a thumbnail. Oh, beautiful, beautiful plant. So tough. So tough. Look at the state of it. That's next to me. He's a big boy. He's a really big boy. All right, put him down. Right. The next plant is, is also a big boy, but he grows really slowly. And you know what? You'll probably see what it is when I walk onto the frame because I can't really hide it. You can literally see what this plant is. But it's filled in caramel marble. Bought it a while ago. Said I always wanted one. I wasn't absolutely obsessed with the idea. I just thought, you know, I'll wait for a good one to come along. And I have this one. And I have made cuttings. But I don't know where they've gone. Maybe they're dead. I'm not sure. I can only say this guy, but I know he's being cut because I can see it. And this here is the regrowth. Let me just check one second. I must have caramel marble somewhere. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, it might just be lost. It might just be lost to time, which is very annoying because it means I have to do it all over again. My point being, I can confirm these do grow reasonably slowly. Now, it hasn't had the best life with watering and feed. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's not been in the, a great section of the shop, but it does grow quite slow. Now, this one is variegated. It is, honestly. You can see this here. Sorry, it is a bit... It's old, so it's, you know, it's not looking absolutely incredible. Here's an older leaf here. Very nice and serrated, if you like that kind of thing. Um, the next leaf, sorry, I'm going to have to rotate, is here. Very nice, actually. That's quite pretty. And then we've got these as well. That's another thumbnail. I, you know what? The, my plants, I'm saying they don't look the best. These are throwing me some sick thumbnails these days, aren't they? So you're not going to be able to see this. I would be amazed, amazed if the camera picks this up, but I promise it's variegated. Now, you have to really look. See if I can get the water off it. Give me a moment. I'm just gently rub it on my chest. I think I've made it worse. Right, you know what? I'm just going to have to give it a go. Can you see? Please tell me. Please tell me you see variegation. Try and hide my little head. I just rotate the leaf slightly because is it half and half? Because on that, I was looking in the viewfinder there and it looked half and half. It's not. It's spread out quite a lot. A little bit like what this leaf is here. But yeah, I just wanted to give you a very quick update on him. He is growing. He's just not growing at any rate or not. I don't know if people care about these anymore. Not a clue. Not a clue. Let me know if you do. I know for the longest time they've been all the rage, and I mean all the rage, but I don't know if that's still the case because, let's be honest, nothing's really all the rage anymore. So let me know if people are still interested in these. Not in a purchasing sense, I just mean in any sense. Like, do people still like these? Because the money that was in these plants during COVID was literal insanity, guys. It was insane. If anything, I could have had one in COVID. I mean, that would have been a good idea, but I also wasn't going to pay those prices. That's insane. So I'll pop him down. And with that, that concludes my dark red vibe update video. Should I have done it on Valentine's? Absolutely yes. Did I? No. Do I regret it? Yes. Do we have it now? Yes. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like. It lets me know that I'm making content that you enjoy. If you have any suggestions for content, as always, leave them in a comment down below. I do read the comments. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe. Let me know your opinion on anything I've shown you today. And with that said, I will see you next week. Bye, guys.